Uh, we would also like to recognize two former members, um, Representative David Lucas and Senator Robert Brown. I don't know if they're here, uh, but we would like to uh, recognize them and understand uh, as they have resigned and, and moving on to other things. Would like to communicate to everybody here, though, that the General Assembly and the governor see the need of making sure that this area is represented as we go through special session. And then the governor has put in his writ to have the special elections for the House District 139 and the State Senate District 26 to be held on July 19th. If there is a runoff, that runoff will occur on August 16th for the purpose of making sure that those two seats are um, have individuals seated in those and so that this area can be represented as we go through the special session that we will have that will begin on August 15th. Every 10 years we have uh, a census that is taken and when we get those numbers we have to go through the process that's called redistricting. It is not something that we want to do, it's not something that we choose to do, it is something that we have to do in order to follow the law. Constitution requires a one person, one vote. And so when we have the census that's been taken, as I understand it from a legal standpoint, now that we've had those census taken, the maps, the districts that we have right now are illegal. They're out of date. And so we have to go through the process to realign those districts so that we can adhere to the Constitution. And in doing that, we uh, will have a special session August 15th for the purpose of passing new maps, new congressional maps, new public service commission maps, new state house maps, and new senate maps that will bring our districts back in line with the Constitution to adhere to the one person, one vote. So what we have to do is we take the total population of Georgia and we have to divide that by 180 on the house side to see what the average house district should be and that's about 53,800, something like that. And in the Senate, we divide that number by 56 so that every Senate district will have to be close to an average of 172,994. Uh, 172, and so in going about that process, one thing that we're doing now is to gain public uh, input from individuals as to what they believe are the matters that we should take into consideration as we go through this process in how to draw these maps. Again, I'd like to tell everybody, if you wish to speak tonight, please go and sign up out front um, so that we can call you to give you the opportunity to come speak as we have in the other meetings. When you uh, get called to speak, what will happen is I will call two names, and I'm going to apologize up front if I forget to, or if I, mis if I mispronounce your name. I grew up in a town where my name was quite familiar, but then I moved and I found how difficult it is when people do not know how to spell nor pronounce your name. So I'm very sensitive to that, but I will tell you right now, I will mess up somebody's name. And uh, so for that purpose, when you do come to speak, uh, come to this podium, I said, I said, I will call two names and the other person can stand or sit in the chair over there so that we can expedite being able to give people the opportunity to speak. Please, when you come up here, the first thing we ask you to do is to say your name and to tell us where you're from. And at that point, you will be given um, three minutes to make your comments. Um, we have, this has been consistent with other meetings that we've had and giving that number. Uh, so be very aware of that. We have a timekeeper that will be down here. Uh, when your time is up, there will be a beep and he's going to say time. And we would ask that you respectfully do that so that we don't have to get into calling you down, ask you to leave and all that. Just uh, if you could cease your comments at that point in time. What you can do if you have additional comments, if you do not want to speak but do have something you want to comment, then there are many ways that you can communicate to this committee, to the General Assembly, what comments you wish for us to consider. Um, you can send a letter to either one of uh, us chairmen. You can communicate with your local senator and your local House member what you think needs to be considered. You can go online to our website and you can make comments or you can send emails for us to be considered. So there's many different ways by which you can communicate what you think is important for us to take into consideration as we go through this process. Our website, anybody that wants to write down, I will give it to you. Here's what it is. You can go to www.legis.gov. 
ga.gov. You can go to that website. Also on that website, you can go and you can look at the video of all the other hearings, public hearings that we've had in this state, not just uh, the ones that have occurred, but those that will, uh, will occur after this. Um, so you can go and you can review that information. I want to tell everybody that this uh, hearing is being recorded. It will be posted uh, on our website for the public to view, so keep that in mind as you make your comments. Uh, if everybody would take an opportunity now, take your cell phones and please put them in a, um, uh, uh, a sound off. I know you may want to keep it on vibrate or whatever, but if we could please uh, do that, um, that way we won't be disrupted. Nobody will be disrupted when they're making their comments when um, you get the phone call. Also, would like to have a special recognition to the House and Senate staff members who have been here and preparing for this meeting. Um, if you are here from the, either the House or the Senate as a staff capacity, if you would please stand so we can recognize you. Somebody wave in the back. Jeremy, do you want to stand up so we can sing happy birthday to you right now? Today is Jeremy's birthday, 26 years old, and he reminded me today that I'm almost twice as old as him. So, <clears throat> so. Uh, with that, let's take an opportunity to introduce for you the members of the Senate Reapportionment Redistricting Committee. Do we have a, we don't have a hand, we don't have a, we got them all sitting all over the place. If you are a member of the Senate Reapportionment and Redistricting Committee, if you would please stand and introduce yourself. Please start with Senator Tolleson. I'm Senator Tolleson from Perry, Georgia. I represent House in Pulaski, Blackley, Dodge, Telfair, Wilcox, Lawrence, and Johnson counties. My name is Ed Harbison. I represent the 15th Senatorial District from Columbus. Glad to be down here with the man strong as new rope. And we will recognize in a moment, we have a special House member we'll recognize, and I was reminded today, and I have not been good in recognizing the fact that Senator Harbison did three tours in Vietnam and is a Purple Heart recipient. So thank you for your service. <laughs> Others, other Senate members of the Reapportionment Redistricting Committee. Good afternoon. I'm Cecil Staten uh, from here in Middle Georgia. It's my privilege to represent the 18th District, which is portions of Bibb, Houston, Jones, Monroe, and Crawford counties. And my special word of thanks to Mercer University for hosting us today. Okay, do we have any other members of the Senate that are here? Okay, with that, I'm going to let uh, Representative Chairman Lane introduce the House members. We have some very important people here also, <laughs> I've noticed. I noticed some important people out there from the House. Um, I'm, Roger, I'm Roger Lane, and I'm uh, Chairman of the House Reapportionment Redistricting Committee, and I joined Senator Seaball in uh, thanking y'all for being here. It's a very important part of our democracy to have people involved and to have an opportunity to address our members. I would, I would remind you when you come down to speak, we do have the committee sitting here on the first two or three rows, and that's who's going to decide these districts. So as much as you want to talk to us up here on the stage, the committee members are the ones that are going to be doing the voting, so I'd encourage you to um, uh, focus in on them a little bit too. If the House members of the Reapportionment and Redistricting Committee would stand, and then we'll let you introduce each other as we just pass it around. Starting with me. I'm Representative Sisty Hudson from Sparta, Georgia. I represent House District 124, which is six counties in East Central Georgia. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Representative Ed Reinders from Lee County, Georgia and I represent parts of Lee, Darty, Worth, and Talkwick counties. 
Good afternoon. My name is Nikki Stevens. I'm, I, uh, I come here from the hostess city of the South, the first city of Georgia, uh, Savannah, Georgia, uh, District 161. I'm, I'm Ellis Black. I'm from 174, which is right down on the Florida line. I tell everybody I represent everything between Metcalf and Fargo. And good to be with you. I'm Matt Dollar. I, rep I represent Cobb County, East, East Cobb County. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Willie Townsend. I represent District 145, which is Warner Robins, Georgia. Uh, Representative John Yates. I uh, live in Osvaldi County. Griffin's my county seat. Uh, and part of my uh, district is uh, Fayette County, Spalding County, and Fayette County. Thank you. And while he's up, we'd like to recognize uh, Representative Yates. Uh, he's the elder, elder, elder youngest member of our committee. He's 90 years old. Uh, he's, he's a World War II veteran, the last one in the House. And, and we're very, very proud of him. And he's only missed one of these joint meetings so far, so he's, he's a real trooper. Thank you a lot. I'm Representative Richard Smith from Columbus. And I'm Barbara Reese from the lower end of Lookout Mountain to the northwest. I represent Chattooga County and a large portion of Floyd County around the city of Rome. It's like playing jump rope. We're, we're trying not to <laughs> choke a senator. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being very careful, as you can tell. Um, my name is Lynn Smith, Representative Smith. I'm from Noonan, Georgia. That's House District 70. I represent the city of Noonan, western part of Coweta, and part of Heard County. Thank you for having us. I'm Representative Ron Mayo. I represent the 91st House District, which includes parts of DeKalb and northern Henry County. And now, any other House members who are here, besides uh, Majority Leader uh, O'Neill, we'll introduce him last. But any other any other uh, House members here? I know we got one. Again, I'm Representative Nikki Rand. I represent uh, part of Bibb County. Yeah. And welcome to Macon. Thank you. We got one down here. Uh, Robert Dickey represents uh, lots of counties in Middle Georgia, uh, District 136. And I'm Bob Epps, House District 140, Twiggs, Wilkinson, Portion, the Bibb, and Jones, and we do welcome you to Macon and glad to have you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Both chairmen. Good afternoon. I'm Mike Chokas, and District 134 is my district. Uh, I represent Sumter, Sly, Marion, and part of Talbot County. Susan Holmes from Monticello, and I represent all of Jasper County, parts of Monroe, parts of, of Lamar, Jones, and a little portion of, Bi of Bibb, but I'm very glad to be here. Thank you so much. And uh, I guess last but not least, uh, our majority leader of the House of Representatives. Uh, we're very proud of him. Uh, Representative Larry O'Neill, if you want to just welcome us and tell us where your district is, we'd appreciate it. Well, my district is just <laughs> south of here, and you're <laughs> certainly welcome here anytime, Mr. Chairman, <laughs> that, you, that you're in middle Georgia. We're delighted to have you all here, and we really want to thank uh, wonderful folks here at Mercer University and the Medical College here for hosting us. What a, what a great tribute that is to be in such a hallowed place. Thank you all. Welcome. And I think that's that's everybody. Um, I would like to join in Majority Leader O'Neill's uh, thanks to Mercer University. This is my alma mater also, uh, and I was really and hadn't been on campus in a long time, and it's uh, it's really uh, pleasing and and surprising all the changes that have been made and what a, what a great great university. It was a great university when I was here too. 
uh, but it's expanded a little bit since then. <laughs> but we do appreciate y'all uh, hosting us and, and giving us opportunity to show off uh, my alma mater to the members of the House. I also would like to congratulate the senators and the House members who, who appear at, at these hearings to get input from the, from the citizens as to what you feel should be done in redistricting it. And I'd like to give them a big hand. They've been at all these meetings and they've done a fantastic job of paying attention. And I'm sure that it will affect the way the districts get drawn when we get to the drawing stage. So let's give the House members and the Senate members a round for being here. And with that, I'll turn it over to Senator Seaball. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Again, the purpose of this meeting is for the members of this committee to hear from the public what's on your mind, what you believe that we need to, uh, to consider. If you want to speak, please, out front, you'll sign the sheet, and then we'll call you in the name that you, in the order for which you've signed up for. Um, so we want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to say what they want to say. Again, we're limiting comments to three minutes. And also, I just wanted to, to tell you, in order that this be a public hearing for us to hear from you, we will not be engaging in discussion, answering questions, or getting into any debate. Um, you can um, say what you want to say from the podium, but please do not expect us to start engaging in, in discussions like that because you see how easily what could happen is it could turn into a very long discussion and people get discouraged. They don't think they're going to have the opportunity to have their comments be heard, and then they end up leaving. So. We just go through this. I will call out two names. If you'll take the podium, if you're the second person, if you would stand or sit right there to make sure that you're ready to move in right after the person. And when you come to speak, give us your name first and give uh, where you're from and then to give us your comments. With that, we'll begin with Alan Thies and Richard Nadler. And also, I will say this, if for some reason you cannot come to the podium, we do have a microphone that we can bring to you, so just let us know. Good evening. My name is Alan Thies. I live in West Bibb County, right below Wesleyan College, and I'm not here as an unhappy citizen. I consider myself well represented. I'm here tonight to ask that while the reapportionment process is going on, that you consider the fact that the output of your district lines will represent we, the people, and that all people that serve in these newly established districts will indeed be servant leaders. In other words, Let's put the personal power grabs or the political advantages aside and use common sense as we draw the districts. I happen to live in the eighth district for the US Congress. It is probably the longest district in the state of Georgia. I would submit that although we are supposedly the most obese and the poorest people, that most of us in Bibb County have very little in common with the bottom end of district eight. So let's go for some cohesion as far as U.S. House districts, I would su suggest that we put Fort Benning and all of Warner Robins in the same district. Commonality in goals. The 12th district has Fort Stewart and Fort Gordon, but I don't think they have the entire in metropolitan areas of Savannah or Augusta. And here again, we're striving for commonality of goals of the people that live in that district. The 12th district is pretty stretched out and sort of what I call gerrymandered. I would submit, what do the folks in Sharon, Georgia have in common with the people in Savannah? Probably very little. As regards state Senate seats, I happen to live in Bibb County. My senator is Cecil Staten. I would suggest that maybe Bibb County be one Senate seat if that's possible. Here again, even though my wife has relatives in Danville, we really have very little in common with the citizens of Danville, which is basically a retirement community. Have nothing against retirees. I am one myself. I'm a triple dipper. But I think we need to worry about commonality of the citizens and the goals of each respective area. 
If we do that, I think we can make a better Georgia, and I'm looking forward to 14 congressional representatives for the state of Georgia. We are growing. All we gotta do now is flex our muscle with people behind each House of Representative person. And I thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Richard. Good afternoon, senators from the, from the and House members from the General Assembly and fellow citizens of Georgia. My name is Richard Nadler. I'm a resident of Ro Warner Robins, Georgia, and I live in Houston County. I've lived in the state of Georgia for nine years now. I am a graduate of Mercer University Law School, and so I'm an alumni here also, and it has changed. But I'm here today to speak about the little strange approach to redistricting here in Georgia. Here we redistrict the, the General Assembly and the congressional districts, and we don't see any maps here today. We don't have any data here, so we can really help make an analysis and aid the General Assembly committees to do their best job. Now, the buzzword has been for the last year, transparency, transparency, transparency. But that doesn't mean indivisible. I mean, indivisible, invisible. Lines, we'd like to see the lines. We'd like to know what you're thinking about before those, laps, those maps come out. Let us comment on it after the maps are, are out there so we really can be meaningful what, what, we, what we say. The way that these hearings are organized without the participants or the voting, voters looking at maps, that's very difficult for us to talk about and, and comment on the proposed redistricting. Now, the real question is, in simple language, should the voters of Georgia choose their politicians, or should the politicians in Georgia choose their voters? In most cases, political experts hired by state legislators and governors draw maps under the pressure of party so, uh, solidarity and self-protection. Often the lines appeared on the maps that they don't match any geographical or community that boundaries, but instead create communities of like-minded and predictable voters. The resulting gerrymandering of these districts are steadily more partisan, sometimes favoring the party in power, and on other times, creating communities of like-minded and predictable voters. They are steadily more partisan and are there either to help the party in power, power or to have, have allow the incumbent to keep their position. Without the data and some maps, and not just the maps of, 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 the, um, of, how, of how the population is, it's hard for us to make really meaningful comments. Now the constitutional design of the House of Representatives to represent the views of the people as closely as possible. And Thank you. I just hope that you, will, that you will get a lot of meaningful things. And because of the lap, lack of information, Thank you. Us, uh, we have a recess instead of adjourn and have us come back. Thank you. William Perry and Ann McKay. Thank you very much. My name is William Perry. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm the executive director of Common Cause Georgia, and also here representing the Georgia Redistricting Alliance, along with the League of Women Voters of Georgia and Georgia WAN. Um, I did want to start off uh, by saying that a couple of weeks ago down in Columbus at a similar hearing, I did make a mistake um, about the um, pre-clearance process. And thank you to Chairman Sebaugh for helping me get straightened out on that and realizing that once the maps are drawn, there are two avenues for pre-clearance. There's going to the D Justice Department as well as going to court. I do want to clarify, though, that the preferred um, method by our alliance and by our, org our organizations is certainly pre-clearance uh, through the Justice Department, hopefully to save the taxpayers of the state the money of litigation. Um, 
I do want to say that, too, the Georgia Redistricting Alliance is trying to put out information to citizens in order to educate about the process. We have a, a document we call Redistricting 101. If there's any citizens that would like to know more and have one of these, we've got them available. They're also available online at the League of Women Voters website, which is www.lwg, excuse me, lwvga.org. Um, we are pushing for the fair redistricting process and in the preclearance um, underneath that, do feel like if the, the districts are drawn fairly and according to law that there should be no problem with the state of Georgia getting preclearance through the Justice Department and feel that is the easiest route. Uh, we also want to say obviously that this is the first um, redistricting that has been done after a census uh, now that the Republicans are in control and I think I don't have to tell you that when the Democrats were last in control and they redistricting that they did not do it right. Um, we hope that we can learn from experience and know that it can be done fairly without court challenges if the law is followed and principles are established. I've actually read them on the record so I'm not going to repeat them but our uh, alliance has produced five standards that we believe uh, will help with redistricting and certainly make the districts as fair as possible and I hope that you will uh, consider those when you do begin the map drawing process. Again, if there are any citizens or anybody else that would like the information, we'll be here throughout the hearing that can pass, we can pass it along to you. It contains contact information that if you don't have time or aren't able to get up, they referred to the websites and the mailing addresses earlier where you can submit official uh, comments and things like that. And we've got it down here in case you didn't get it down. So again, thank you very much and appreciate the time. Thank you, Ann. Good evening, committee members. My name is Ann McKay, that's M-A-C, capital K-A-Y, and I live in Warner Robins, Georgia, and I've lived in this state for five years. Thank you for the opportunity for the citizens to give comments on redistricting, and I would like to propose that we start fresh and not think about what's happened in the past, and I'd like to talk about three important points, fairness, transparency, inequality. First, fairness. Voters should be able to define their own communities. The map should reflect the city and county lines as much as possible. The process should be applied fairly to all voters, and maps shouldn't be distorted by local or state politics, which has been an issue in the past. The map should fairly reflect the voting patterns in that area. Second, transparency. There must be transparency in every aspect of the process. And by that, I mean there should be openness, communication, and accountability. If we have communication here, we are able to comment. But we do need further review and input as the process continues. As the maps are developed, there has to be opportunity for citizens to attend hearings like this and also to have access through the internet and be able to make comments and to look at some interactive aspects of the redistricting maps. The mapping process should be fair and open. This is critical because right now we have a Republican appointed legislative and congressional reapportionment office and the person giving legal guidance is also counsel to the state Republican party. There needs to be nonpartisan aspects related to redistricting. And since this is the case that right now we have a partisan focus I would like to know what measures are in place so there is some accountability to the taxpayers and the citizens that will show that the process is fair and objective. Finally, equality. We, I have been studying what other groups have said about redistricting and they talk about the need to have principles in place and I would like to know what those principles are for this process here in Georgia. First, they should be transparent to the public as I mentioned. It should provide data, tools, and opportunities for the public to have direct input into the process. And they should be drawn in a manner that will allow the elected bodies to reflect the diversity of the population in the area, especially the racial and ethnic diversity that we have in this state. Maybe it's time to consider representation that is proportional rather than gerrymandering, which has happened in the past. With software and tools that are now available, citizens can participate. 
we must remember that all voters are equal under the Constitution. Thank you. Thank you. Susan Green and Bob Hargrove. Again, if anybody wishes to speak, please go sign up front so that we can call you up to speak in a timely manner. Good afternoon. My name is Susan Green and I'm from Jones County and I want to thank you all for your hard work in uh, addressing the, the concerns and we appreciate this public hearing to be able to give our input and speaking as a 27 year resident of Jones County and I would like to say my experience that every time uh, we've had redistricting uh, for the census, uh, Jones County ends up in a different congressional district or split uh, at least two ways and uh, I would hope that uh, you would uh, consider uh, keeping counties whole, especially the rural counties. Um, we uh, really uh, lose a lot when we're split uh, because of our smaller population size and um, also uh, would like to, uh, would like to, we would like to stay in the 8th district <laughs> and um, hope that, uh, hope that there won't be too much being in the middle of the state. I know we come, come to, you know, it's a crossroads and uh, I'm sure there, there will be intersections of district lines happening in this area possibly. Uh, we, um, my, my opinion also, I think it's uh, good to have uh, personally a lot of uh, diversity uh, in your, in your uh, congressional districts especially. I think that uh, allows for, uh, for every, every voice to be heard uh, in that district. Um, the uh, state and uh, House and Senate districts uh, really, um, you know, I know personally I'm, I'm happy. They've, they've stayed more the, more the same through these processes than the congressional district for our county. And I hope that will continue and I hope we'll have stability with our congressional district uh, in our area. The um, other thing I, I, I'd like to see, uh, Two, I think it's um, something that's hurt uh, the middle Georgia area and somebody, you know, I don't, I don't live in Bibb County, but I am a neighbor and, uh, you know, I think the Senate seats, uh, somebody mentioned they'd like to see one senator from, from Bibb County. Um, personally, I'd like to see three. <laughs> Anything to break that tie so that uh, you know, good decisions can be made that affect the whole middle Georgia region since uh, Bibb County is, uh, is a center of uh, population and commerce and, and uh, arts and industry. So thank you very much. I hope you'll consider those points. Thank you. Bob? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for coming to to middle Georgia to provide uh, uh, us opportunities for input in this very important process. Uh, my, my comments will be brief. Uh, uh, one of my concerns can is as you- Can I get your name and- Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Bob Hardgrove. I'm a resident of Bibb County. Uh, been a voter for 36 years here in Bibb County. Um, my concern is as you introduced yourselves, many of you had to say, well, I'm from part of this county or part of that county. Uh, I would really like to see uh, all the lines be on the county borders, uh, both the Senate, both the, the House, and even the congressional districts, because that's really the, that's really the area in which the local people uh, are, are most involved. Um, so that's a, that, that seems to be a simple uh, issue, but I understand that in, in high densely populated areas, you might have to split them but um, the split should be uh, 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 transparent and open to everyone. My second comment uh, ha has to do 
with uh, the races. Uh, I've been uh, voting, as I said, for 36 years. For the first, you know, what, 15 or 20 years, uh, I had one person to, to vote for almost in every race. There were very few contested races, and they were all Democrats. And, and the reverse is now the case in some, in some races. I would like to see both uh, 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 parties represented in almost every race so that the voters have a choice. Um, in, this, in this current uh, election, it, it looks uh, like I'll have some selection at the local level, but uh, at the state and, and uh, levels, it, it's difficult. So I would like to see competition so that we can have the voters can ha have a, a knowledgeable debate of, of, the, of the issues with the, the people vying for that candidacy. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, uh, Albert O'Brien. Nobody's moving, did I mispronounce that? Um, your email address is cool and dry at mybluelight.com. <laughs> Did I get that right? right. You got the email right. <laughs> and David Lucas. Yeah. Good evening. I'm Albert O'Brien. I'm a resident of Peach County. I've been involved in the reapportionment process for the last 20 years. 20 years ago, my house was taken out of the district, and by Democrats, by the way, uh, in the wee wee hours of the night doing reapportionment and so forth. So that, that I have a history of dealing with this process. Uh, basically, there are two things, and and uh, and those two things is basically the follow the law. Uh, Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act. That's the law. We can't change it. If we follow the law, we won't even be in court. We get an a, additional congressional seat. That means the pie's bigger. So the pie's bigger. You got more, more people to split. So if we follow Section 2 of the, of the Voting Rights Act, we'll be fine. Thank you. Afternoon, gentlemen. I'm David E. Lucas, former member of the Georgia General Assembly. I think that the process has to be fair, must be transparent. It must include everybody. It must include social, economic, cultural, as well as political demographics. As I've watched this committee over the, the course of your hearings, I've not seen one female nor a black sit in front of any audience except in Savannah, Georgia. I think there's something wrong with that process since we are a part of Georgia. Forty-eight percent of the, the voters in the last election voted Democratic. So I would assume that you would look at dem the demographics of, of the voters of the state of Georgia, that 48 percent would be uh, Democratic. The other thing is that the time that you have the hearings, most folks are working or just getting off from work, trying to get the kids together and can't make these hearings. The last part, you are not holding hearings in rural Georgia and rural Georgia is gonna suffer more than anybody else just based on population alone and that they are gonna lose population and these hearings ought to be in rural Georgia where folks are going to lose representation based on population. With that, I would uh, ask you to consider the, these remarks and uh, handle them appropriately. Okay, Nancy Terrell and Diane Van. Again, if anybody has come in late and wishes to speak, please go up out front, sign the sheet so we can um, call you to speak. If nobody else is to speak, we're going to have to take a break and see if more people show up to speak because these are all that we have signed up at this point in time. Good evening. 
thank you very much for having these hearings and thank you for coming to Macon. My name is Nancy Terrell and I'm a resident of Bibb County, uh, have been since 1972. And I'm certainly a voter. I'm very interested in this process. I would like to echo uh, several things or at least one thing that uh, Representative Lucas said and I too am disappointed that the Senate uh, failed to appoint any women to this um, committee. I do believe there are four from the House, but I, I do believe uh, we represent, you know, half of Georgia at least and like to be so represented. Um, I too uh, believe that the districts should conform as much as possible to the county borders. I would like to see Bibb County certainly um, be uh, kept whole with our representatives, certainly in the Senate and in our congressional district. We too have been split off and on over the years and I think it's better if we have uh, one representative. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to make a few points about how the committee will proceed. I would hope that you would make your initial maps available online um, and to the press um, so they can be uh, widely and easily accessible to all of the citizens of, of Georgia, not just those with computers, and get, allow time, perhaps uh, a break after the first week or two, uh, for citizens to comment and perhaps even come up to the Capitol or have several hearings back in the districts to hear comments and feedback on those initial um, maps. I also hope that, um, that uh, there will be a report issued at the end of the process explaining exactly why the committee chose the district lines that uh, they did. Uh, so we will all understand it. I would urge the committee to, or the state, to submit the maps to the Department of Justice for preclearance rather than going to the courts. I think it took at least four years, or uh, maybe six, the last time before the courts finally approved a um, um, constitutional um, constitutional district, so um, I would certainly hope that in these times of uh, um, um, strained economic resources that we wouldn't spend the um, state resources on that. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Diane? I'm Diane Van. I'm from Bibb County, and I speak from the perspective of a former candidate. I was running for Congress, 8th District, uh, last year, and was running uh, with Austin Scott and uh, Ken DeLoach. Ken would have liked to be here, in fact, and so I agree with Mr. Lucas. It would be nice if the time of this gave more, uh, of starting this would have given more time for the person getting off work. Uh, just as a, a comment, I, as I did the 21 county tour every month for seven months uh, and did grow quite fond of all 21 counties, I did find some problems as a candidate. This is a map I used and there were three counties that were split, uh, which were Newton, uh, Baldwin, and Worth County. And this is the best I know of their limits of where I would have been if I'd won that race. And, and looking at the street names and, and the uh, plot names and so on that I did get offline were, was not very helpful. So my strong suggestion is you make the uh, do not split counties as you do this, please, for the candidates' say, sake especially. And then also I'd like to see that um, uh, you have like 159 representatives at the House level and there's like 139 counties if I'm remembering correctly. And as I went around the counties, I found people saying, we wish we just had one representative. And there's enough that you could have one representative per county and then have an extra representative if the uh, population warranted. Another thing is I found that farming districts, uh, particularly in Penn Hill, that lower area of my, this district, uh, they felt like 
they were being ignored and they, they thanked us for doing things as we campaigned. Uh, they felt ignored. So just to take that into account as you do this planning too, please. Thank you. Thank you. Patty Bentley. Good afternoon, I'm Patty Bentley. Um, Vice Chairman of the Taylor County Board of Commissioners, and I just want to thank this committee for having these meetings. I uh, just want to reiterate what our Representative Lucas mentioned, small rural counties, he's absolutely right. I had to leave my son and get him squared away and get here as soon as I could, so I just arrived. But if there are gonna be future hearings, uh, please consider our small rural counties over in Taylor and Peach. Fort Valley State University have a very beautiful auditorium that can certainly host such a meeting. Um, please consider that. And anything that you can do to keep us in uh, House District 135, I would certainly appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Right now, we don't have anybody else that has signed up to speak. Here's how we handle that, is that we'll take a break for a certain period of time because individuals may be coming in to um, a little later on. Before we do that, if we have any members of the House or Senate that have arrived after we have had everybody the opportunity to introduce themselves, if you would please stand so that we could let you introduce yourself. So if we have any additional members of the House or Senate that have arrived since we did the introduction, then we will please allow yourself to identify you may have to walk down to get get a hold of that. Good evening. My name is Vincent Fort. I serve in the state senate. I represent uh, parts of the cities of Atlanta and East Point in Fulton County. It's good to be here. Good evening. I'm Horacina Tate. I represent um, part of Fulton County. Some parts that Senator Fort doesn't represent. Um, I'm in the state senate also. It's good to be here. Good evening, I'm Mac Jackson. I represent District 142, which is Washington County, Jefferson County, a part of Johnson, a part of Emanuel, and a part of Burke County, and it's good to be here. And I'm Matt Ramsey, a state representative from Fayette County. Doug hasn't. And Doug McKillop, House District 115 from Athens. Thank you. And Representative Ramsey is the vice chair on the House side, and Doug is the uh, secretary on the House side. I'm Senator Gail Davenport, represent portions of Clayton County and Hendon County. Uh, that's District 44. Glad to be here in Middle Georgia. Okay, with that, I have 550. And uh, again, if you have not already signed up and spoken, you have the opportunity to do so. Just go out front and sign up. Um, so you have the opportunity to have your comments. Uh, how about we take a break and we'll come back at 6.10. At 6.10. Thank you.
Okay, if everybody could please cease their conversations and take their seats. If everybody would please cease conversations and take their seats. Okay, again, we'll remind everybody that um, if you wish to speak, to please go out front, sign the sheet so that we could call you the name that you signed up. Remind everybody again, we're uh, limiting comments to three minutes, but that there are many ways that you can make sure that your complete comments can be made uh, for consideration. You can write a letter to either the, uh, Chairman Lane or myself. You can write letters to uh, your state senator or your house member. You can go to the website. Again, that is www.legis.ga.gov. And you can make comments um, through that. So there's plenty of opportunity to make sure you have your complete comments that are, uh, are given to the committee for consideration. Since we have another member that has shown, us, shown up, I will allow the vice chair of the Senate Reapportionment Redistrict Committee to introduce himself. And if we have any other House or Senate members who have not introduced themselves yet, if you would please stand so we could give you an uh, opportunity to introduce yourself. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Bill Kalsert. Uh, good to be here. I grew up in Macon, so it's good to be back in my old stomping grounds and see uh, all my friends again. Okay, we have, oh, I'm sorry, yes. Sharon Beasley Teague, a rep from South Fulton, 65th House District. Thank you. Any other members of the General Assembly that have not introduced themselves yet? Okie dokie. Um, Martha Branson and Laura Jackson. Hang on a second, make sure we get that turned on. Good evening. I'm Martha Bond Branson, and I'm from Jones County. And I wanted to say hello to Mr. Kalser. I know your mother. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we're glad that all of you have worked so conscientiously. And I fully want you to know that I trust your good judgment. And I just wanted to briefly comment that I hope when the decisions are made that we won't waste Georgia resources by having any lawsuits. And that's all I have to say. Thank you for the time and thank you so much for all your efforts. Thank you. <laughs> I got a few things I could tell you to tell his mama. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Laura Jackson. I'm a resident of Jones County. Um, I'd like to say thank you to the committee and the state representatives and Senate members who are able to come to Macon in Middle Georgia today. But as a resident of Jones County in a rural area, I say please don't forget our rural counties throughout the state. Um, I just wanna make sure that I get an opportunity to say as a constituent, please make sure you check with our very capable and already elected representatives who are not on your committee. I do believe that our elected officials that are elected to represent us are best able to communicate to the members of this committee what might best be new districting lines for our state. And I do understand that many of us are concerned about it being simple and easy to understand that it does go along state lines. But as a former congressional aide, that's not always possible. And sometimes as residents, we don't realize that. 
please, in knowing that, do what's best for us, but most manageable for the residents and the constituency of the state of Georgia. We want an opportunity to be equally and fairly and consensus, consensuously, by, with good synergy, represented by our soon-to-be elected officials. And we would hope that you would not, as a committee, become so cloistered and tight that you don't go out and reach out to the representatives that we have duly and carefully elected who are good representatives and the best person to ask what their constituency might need or look forward to. I thank you for your time and please get out to some of the other rural counties in the state. Thank you guys. Thank you. If anybody wishes to speak, please go up front and sign up uh, and then um, we will allow opportunity to speak with we have no other speakers at this point in time, so I have 616, so we'll take a break till 630.
everybody could cease conversations for a moment so I get everybody's attention. Everybody's attention, please. I didn't say you had to take your seats because all I want to do was get everybody's attention to tell you that we, at this point, do not have anybody else that has signed up to speak. It is 6.30, and so we will take another 10-minute break. And we'll give to 6.40 in case somebody shows up to speak. 6.40, thank you.
We still do not have anybody else that has signed up to speak. If you are here and would like to speak and would like to um, um, make your concerns and comments um, known, please go and sign up up front and we'll give you the opportunity to speak. It is 6.40, we don't have any speakers, so we will take one more 10 minute recess. And if we don't get any speakers signed up at that point in time, we will make closing comments and pass along some final information. 650, thank you.
All right, if I could get everybody to please cease their conversation and take their seats. If everybody could please take their seats. The President of the Senate and the Speaker of the House would really love if we responded th that well when we're in session. We have no other speakers, so with that, I am going to turn the mic over to the Chairman of the House Reapportionment and Redistrict Committee, Representative Roger Lane, for some closing comments. Th thank you, Senator. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for being here tonight and participating in this public hearing. It's very important to our committee uh, to hear and, and to have heard from you. Uh, it'll certainly help us in our deliberations as we work on uh, getting redistricting done this year. Uh, our schedule from here, we've had eight, eight public hearings so far. <laughs> There's so many about forgot. But our schedule here Tuesday night will be in Stockbridge for another public hearing. If you have any friends or anybody that, uh, from that area that you think might be interested, tell them we'll be having it at the same time, five to seven. Um, and that time has worked pretty pretty good for us. We keep the mics open until 7 o'clock, and we've had at other venues, we've had uh, people show up at 10 minutes to 7 or a quarter to 7 and wanted to speak to the committee, uh, and we think that's worked real well. Uh, you know, we could stay here at 9 o'clock, but I don't think anybody would be here after about 7 or 7.30, but it has worked well, and that'll be the same schedule we'll have tomorrow night, so we'd appreciate it. if you have any friends in those areas, uh, we, would, we would like to hear from them. When we get through at the end of the summer, we will go into special session on August the 15th, and the House and Senate will start working on actually having committee meetings uh, and considering maps, and those, those meetings are open to the public. Uh, they will be broadcast on the Internet. Uh, if you can't get to the meeting, you can see the discussions and debate. Uh, that's the time that the maps will be debated, and folks can bring in their maps and their versions and what they want us to do with the uh, redistricting. Uh, be just like any other bill or any other committee meeting, it'll be open for people to come in. So we encourage you to participate in that process. Uh, everything we have done so far from public hearing standpoint is archived and is on the internet for you to go and see what comments we receive from other parts of the state. Uh, it's a real exciting uh, video to watch. and. Uh, I <laughs> I get a laugh out of it every now and then when we, uh, up here we make a mistake that, that stands out as glaring and it's kind of fun to see us uh, under the gun every now and then. But, but I encourage you to look at those and, and, and really see what, what some of the other, other areas have said. Um, so with that, uh, we're going to adjourn the meeting. We appreciate y'all being here and, and uh, we'd like to see you up in Stockbridge tomorrow night for, for another exciting meeting. Thanks a lot. <laughs>